Hello, hello, writers. I'm Kristen Kiefer, author of fantasy fiction and creative writing resources, and you are listening to the Well Storied Podcast, where I share insights, encouragement, and actionable advice designed to help you craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, always in 30 minutes or less, so you can get back to writing, of course. Ready for the show? Let's get talking. Welcome back to the Well Storied Podcast Writers, or if this is your first time joining us, thank you for tuning in today. It's great to have you here. Today is November 15th, 2019, and before diving into today's episode titled What to Expect When Working with a Freelance Editor, I just wanted to give a quick thank you for the wonderful response to last week's episode. Uh, that episode was... Uh, why publishing won't make you a real writer. And in that episode, I just talked about creative validation and creative fulfillment and where we can source those things in our own lives and how we cannot look for them in external sources. We have to find validation and fulfillment in our creative pursuits within us. And the response was just so lovely. I had several writers reach out to say that they just really needed to hear that and that it was one of the episodes of the podcast that they've enjoyed most in recent memory, and that really means a lot to me, so thank you very much. With that said, let's dive into today's episode. This episode translates the latest article from the well Storied blog into audio. If you would like to check out the article that also serves as the episode transcript, make sure to pop on over to well-storied.com slash freelance editor. Now let's dive in. In recent months, I've had the privilege of working with two freelance editors to prepare my upcoming book for writers, Build Your Best Writing Life, for publishing. First, I worked with Sarah Letourneau of Heart of the Story Editorial to complete a line edit which helped ensure I was using the best possible language to convey each point in my book. I then worked with Sarah Kolb-Williams of kolbwilliams.com on a copy edit to further polish my writing. I'll also be working with Sarah later this month on a final proofread of the book. Before these occasions, I hadn't worked with a professional editor in any capacity. Because I knew so little about the process I was nervous to dive in. Still, I braved the experience because I knew that working with professional editors was essential if I wanted to prepare the best possible book to share with the world. In the end, I couldn't have asked for two better first experiences, which were in large part due to choosing the best freelance editors for me and my manuscript. But that is not what we're going to discuss today. If you're looking for tips on choosing a great editor, make sure to check out Sarah Letourneau's recent guest post on this subject. I'll link that for you in today's episode description. Rather, today I'm going to help you have a fantastic first time working with a freelance editor by breaking down everything you need to know before getting started. If you're feeling nervous or confused about the process, this is the episode for you. So. What does working with a freelance editor look like? First up, let's talk about querying editors. After compiling a list of editors who may be a great fit for your project, it's time to query your top picks to determine whether they're interested in working on your project and whether they have the availability to do so. A query can also provide insight into how much an editor's services will cost and whether their particular editing style is the best fit for your project. Some editors provide submission forms on their websites that make querying easy. These forms often include prompts for each piece of information an editor needs in order to send you a comprehensive reply. Other editors post a written list of the items they'd like you to include when getting in touch. If an editor provides an email address, but no further contact instructions on their website, 
I've included an email template in today's episode transcript at well-storied.com slash freelance editor that you can use to take the overwhelm out of querying. Up next, let's talk about receiving a sample edit. During the querying process, most editors will offer what's called a sample edit. This is quite literally a sample of the editor's work. The editor will complete your desired service on a small portion of your manuscript, which should help you determine whether their editing style is a good fit for you and your project. One thing to note is that sample edits should always be provided free of charge. If an editor wants you to pay for a sample edit, run the other way. Some editors request a specific portion of your manuscript for a sample edit, so be mindful. When seeking sample copy edits for Build Your Best Writing Life, one editor requested the first chapter of my book, while another asked for one chapter each from the beginning, middle, and end of the manuscript. Yet another editor asked me to provide a 5,000-word sample from any portion of the book. Each of these sample edits provided me with enough insight to determine whether the editor's work was a good match for my project. If an editor doesn't explicitly state that they offer sample edits on their website, don't be afraid to ask. Most editors are more than willing to provide them. Sample edits serve the editor as well as potential clients, helping the editor determine whether they'd like to work on your project and what the best quote would be for the services you're seeking. Speaking of which, let's talk about rates and quotes. Editors structure their rates in several different ways. Some editors charge by the hour, while others charge a set rate per word, per 1,000 words, or per page, among other pricing options. Editors frequently charge different rates for individual editing services as well. In any case, you'll want to receive a firm quote for your project before committing to an editor. If you've completed a submission form on an editor's website, or sent them an email based on any content contact instructions provided, the editor will likely include an estimated or exact quote in their reply. If you're querying an editor who didn't provide any contact instructions, make sure to request a quote such as I do in the query template provided in today's transcript. If you're interested in working with a particular editor, but can't afford the rate listed on their website, consider contacting them anyway. After reviewing your sample edit, an editor might provide an adjusted rate for the work that needs to be completed for your unique project, such as Sarah Cole Williams did for my copy edit. Other editors are willing to negotiate rates to accommodate your budget. Within reason, of course. Once again, in today's episode transcript, I have included a email template that you can use if an editor provides a quote that's a bit outside your budget. Next, let's talk about further communications. The primary mode of contact when communicating with editors is email. However, some editors also offer the option of a live call during the query process to discuss your project and their services. Some editors also offer to schedule a call to answer any questions you might have during or after the editing process. More on this in a moment. If you are uncomfortable with calls as a form of communication, simply let your editor know that you'd prefer to stick to email. This is something I've done several times with editors and other online creatives, as calls, webinars, and other live events tend to wreak havoc on my anxiety, and I've never had a single complaint. Next up, legal contracts. Most editors will have you sign a legal contract before working together. This contract benefits both parties, establishing project expectations such as deadlines and the exact services that will be rendered, and it protects the work and rights of all those involved. Before signing, 
read this contract carefully. Don't be afraid to bring any questions or concerns you might have to your editor's attention. Then, after signing, save a copy of this contract for yourself, preferably in a cloud-based storage system so it can't be lost. You're unlikely to need the contract for legal matters down the road, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. All that said, some editors don't use contracts. If you would prefer to have one, let them know. Let's talk about payment options and installments. Editors frequently use third-party apps like PayPal and QuickBooks to issue invoices, which you can then fulfill using the payment option of your choice, such as credit or debit cards or a bank transfer. However, before paying an invoice, always double check to ensure it matches the rate you agreed upon during the querying process. Editors frequently charge for their services in installments, issuing two or more invoices during a project's timeline. This not only makes editing more affordable overall, but also helps hold editors accountable to their work, since they won't get paid in full until they've completed the project and their client is happy. If paying in a greater number of installments would make the total cost less financially stressful for you, don't hesitate to ask if your editor can accommodate this need. Most freelance editors are willing to work with you on nearly any aspect of your project, so long as your request is within reason. Now onto the actual editing process itself. Most editors work in Microsoft Word, leaving feedback in the form of comments and using the track changes feature to quite literally track the changes they make to your manuscript. Upon receiving your edited manuscript, you can work through every tracked change, accepting or rejecting it as you see fit, and you can make revisions based on your editor's comments. If you've never worked with track changes, have no fear. It's much simpler than you might think. You can click on the link provided in today's episode transcript to view comprehensive instructions on using this feature compiled by freelance editor Sophie Plail. Don't have Microsoft Word? No worries. Most word processors like Scrivener and Google Docs allow you to export a file as a Word document that you can then send to your editor. You can also open Word documents containing comments and track changes in Google Docs. So you don't necessarily need to download Word in order to work with an editor. That said, Google Docs did have trouble loading my line edited manuscript due to the sheer volume of comments and track changes it contained. So in the end, I did have to download Word to process the edits. Just something to be aware of. Finally, let's talk about post-project follow-up. After receiving your edited manuscript, take the time to review your editor's comments and changes. If you have any questions about a particular suggestion or any other pertinent part of the project, don't hesitate to reach out. Editors want to help you create the best possible version of your manuscript, and that means ensuring you understand the work they've completed. Some editors offer to schedule a call so they can address your concerns directly, while other editors prefer to answer questions via email. Determine the communication method that's best for both you and your editor so you can process their work with confidence and clarity. And voila! Just like that, you've learned to navigate your first professional editing experience. Congratulations! Working with an editor is one of the very best things you can do for both your manuscript and your growth as a writer. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Podcast Writer. I hope you found it helpful to your writing journey. If so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a new episode and to give the podcast a quick rating and review. Doing so goes a long way toward helping the podcast reach new writers and lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm creating. 
You can also give me a shout out directly on Twitter at Kristen underscore Kiefer. For additional guidance as you work to craft sensational novels and build your best writing life, be sure to head on over to www.well-storied.com where I share blog posts, workbooks, e-courses, and other helpful resources for writers. Again, that's w-e-l-l-s-t-o-r-i-e-d.com. Thank you again for tuning in to today's episode, my friend. Until next time, happy writing!